Hey guys, I'm at Motostron on Redwood City. That's Joe. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, Joe. Thank you for letting me hang out with Frankie and check out your bikes. I mean, no you have a lot of this cool stuff that's kind of early, you know, to the market around here. And today I wanted to talk about displays. So, you know, we've got the Intuvia that you're all probably familiar with, removable, got the little USB charging port, remote button pad, the Purion, that's the new tiny one, not removable, but compact, nice for off-road riding. And now the Nyon. Let's go check it out. Hey, Frankie. Hi there. So did you get it? He's downloading the app. Yeah. This is straight from Germany, right? This right. is yeah. high tech. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available yet in the US. Ah. I hope this will be soon because it's such a neat thing to your e-bike. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's talk about it. Like, I'm, I'm going to start with the basics while he uh. configures that. It's got another button pad, very much like the Intuvia, but with a home icon and a little joystick. Mm -hmm. And then over on the display, the display is removable, just like Intuvia. It's got the micro USB port. There's the joystick color. And you can actually see it like getting brighter or darker depending on the conditions. Right. Yeah. And you can also still mount your Intuvia. It's the same mount. Ah, cool. Very cool. Yeah. It's a little backwards compatibility right. there. And it has several different screens. So this is the kind of dashboard. Mm -hmm. It shows you all your statistics. So my last 30 days, last month, 1,004 miles. This month nice already. Nice job, buddy. <laughs> this month already, 677. It's the 15th of the month, by the <laughs> way, for anyone who's... So you're on track to beat last month. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and then you can see you can see the, the battery level exactly in percentage. I love that because I'm yeah. constantly complaining that the Bosch, you know, the Intuvi, the Purion, they have five ticks, which is yeah. like 20% increments. Uh, at least they have range estimate, mm. right? So you can kind of get right. s better feedback. But percentage, thank you, Bosch. It's like really that's nice. what we were hoping yeah, but for. So most of the the e-bike riders should be aware of how far they can get per battery or per bar on the battery. Ah. So after a couple of rides, you get used to this and you know if you can do this hill or not. Yeah, a little bit of practice. So tell yeah. me what else is going on yeah, here. So there's another screen. Uh, this shows the elevation over the last um, miles. So this is set to zero now because just started it. Um, you can change to different screens. It's like speed on yeah. this one. You can also define your custom riding modes. We'll come to this later. Mm, okay. And we have a map. There we go. That's so really nice. how does this map work? Because there are some systems out there that they need your GPS to be running on a phone and they're really just tethering. Yeah, That's the Kobe system yeah, I'm kind of thinking of. Yeah, the Kobe with the phone, yeah. But uh, this one is way better. It's all built in huh. and it has the GPS. So you see we have, even in this building, we have GPS signal. Wow, it's a satellite right yeah. there. We are hooked to the wireless and we have GPS. Wow. So, so this has Wi-Fi for like updates and stuff? Yes, for updates and to to synchronize all your routes, waypoints, and all your trips. Huh. You just come back home, it automatically hooks, hooks up to the Wi-Fi and synchronizes all your data. That's awesome. Did, yeah. When was the last, like how frequent are these updates for maps and stuff? So if I ride with my um, active access point on my mobile, yeah, it's every minute. Huh. Yeah. So it's kind of staying up to date with uh, the latest map data. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I guess if you connect. No, not the map data. It's the your personal ride data. Oh, yeah. oh, because there's yeah. this online component of like your profile. Yes. You so even if you lost this display, you'd still have a profile online. Yes, right. You have all rides online, hmm. and you can export your routes from this website. You can import routes, you can modify Sweet. them. Very cool. Mm -hmm. It still has. I noticed there was a headlight icon before, and you've got the M99 Supernova. Yeah. Now that we're inside, it's going full bright. Like yeah, normally, there's bright, running yeah. mode lights on yeah. the outside. Um, yeah, what else is here? I mean, it's just kind of neat yeah, so to, to dig in. Also, your fitness data. It shows you how much, what you are pedaling. Hmm. Oh, this was really cool. So we ate lunch together and you were right. like, yeah, normally I'm putting out 60% of the wattage and the bike's putting out, like, show yeah, me some of that because you're a pretty example, strong rider. On the website, Yeah. you can see I did a, a ride here that was, you see, let's see, it was, uh, the statistics is below. It was almost three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, 21 something miles, 4,700 feet ascent. Wow. And my kilocalories, my cadence, my average speed, maximum speed, my average power output was only 157 
I sometimes write more, sometimes less. I got. I want to talk about that mm -hmm. for a minute, okay? Because you know the Bosch mid drive, any of these motors, they're all rated at like 250 watts, yeah. nominal, but they peak probably above 500, 600, yeah. depending on the model. And a lot of people in the U.S., it's always like, oh, I want a big, powerful motor. But you're saying your average leg power on this entire ride was like 157. Yeah, and it's still good. And that's so, so have, good, yeah. I have rides where I have a power average for more than 200. Mm -hmm. But to, to do this more than 200 watts for two or three hours, you yeah. ha really have to be in a good shape. And so that's the point. Like yeah. these motors, even if they were only 250, which again, that's kind of the nominal. That's still way more than it's, you do as a person. It sounds only 250. It sounds so weak, but it's really strong. Awesome. And you see, for example, the statistics on that ride was the engine did 27 oh, percent, and whoa. I did 73 percent. That's awesome. And 53 percent. Even it was a lot of uphill. It was off. Wow. And my custom riding modes one and two for. 43, 42 and 5 percent. Tell me about these custom riding modes. What is that? Yeah, you can um, configure them with the app. So you have the app here. Uh, get your dashboard, everything. Mm. And you can see your own activities. You can see the map and um, do some route planning. And in the settings, you have, for example... Uh, these are all your bikes. Yeah, these are some motors, yeah. Wow. Bikes. <laughs> so you can set your custom riding screens, custom fitness screen, and the custom, ride, custom riding modes. Hmm. So I set them, for example, to 30%, the lowest. Okay. It's really just a little bit. As, uh, Is that like eco? That's, you know, it no, it's very less than eco. Oh, but yeah. in terms of the steps here, so B, is that like the second step up? Because A no, is... B is just uh, the speed selected here. Huh. Uh, uh-oh. You can uh, put the speed and the uh, output as you want. Interesting. And so you have the four levels here. Oh, one, those two, are the four three, levels. Four. Yeah. And so I have one with the maximum, of course. Then this one has only 150%, or only <laughs> still a lot. Yeah. And this one is the 60% and 30%. So I, to get a really, really good range, I just use a little bit assistance, this which is, is good for me. Th thank you. Yeah, th that clarifies. So one, two, three, four is mm. associated with each line, and, and each of those lines has a higher speed and more power. Yeah. But you've con you've configured them. Yes. So you, you have your own drive mode. So That's neat. As eco was a bit too much for me, I just put a smaller one. Dropped it down a little yeah. bit. So if someone's in the U.S. and they really want one of these, I mean, you're in the U.S. Is this a German bike or can they? No, this is a U.S. bike. So they're kind I of inner compatibility here. there. It's, it's compatible. Okay. There are some minor bugs in the display, but it's still working pretty good. Okay. So yeah. for the people, I mean, hi, if you're in Europe, mm. awesome. <laughs> you guys are way ahead right now. Yeah. And it's neat to see this stuff and have, it's kind of an ambassador, someone who's, who's from the real, yeah. you know, where it started. Bosch yeah. is German brand, so is High Bike. Yeah. Um, so thank you for... So one thing for the navigation, which is the most important thing here. Okay, yeah, so let's do it. When I start my ride tomorrow, mm -hmm. I just go here, navigate, check my safe routes. And then, for example, I select day one, maybe this one. Hmm. I will start the GPX, and it's starting now. Wow. So I'm not on the track which I configured. You can also um, go directly to the starting point, navigate, save routes. So it'll take you to the starting yeah, point for where your route is. Yeah, if you see here, wow. I select the same uh, to the origin, oh. and then it's calculating uh, your route to the starting point. Does it talk to you, or how do you, you no, just it doesn't go down? Talk. Okay. It doesn't talk, it does not have a speaker to stay uh, waterproof. Oh, yeah. okay. So yeah, this is highly, I noticed, how long have you had this one? It's a little dirty, but it stayed oh, in pretty good shape. It, it already survived some crashes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kicked it off several times when I went over the handlebar. Oh. But uh, I have it for, uh, Almost, almost three years now. Looks like it's holding up pretty well. Yeah. Um, you can, if you are hungry, you can, for example, <laughs> uh, let's see, the recent destination, or we have the points of interest, and there's, for example, the uh, McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> classic. <laughs> and it would just take us there. Yes, 
you can select between the fast scenic or short short route. Oh wow! Well, you got a long way to get to McDonald's way up there in yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, it was Francisco. A, it was another it was a San Francisco McDonald's. Awesome. So once you start actually handling the bike, it it sort of updates and calibrates and yes, uh, just right. like a so standard standard GPS. Yeah. Wow, is there anything else um, you want to say about this or some feedback on, on the uh, Nyon? Yeah, if you could get this, <laughs> there's nothing, no better toy to your e-bike, for your e-bike. Awesome, this is really great. I, I appreciate your time, Frankie. And uh, I realize that wasn't quite like the thorough, you know, going through every single adjustment, but I mean, this is the first time I've even seen one of these, mm. and, and I really appreciate you sharing some of your own experiences yeah. with it, the map data. This is what you use now, like, for all your rides, yes, right? Yes, for all my rides. Since I have this, I haven't used my, my Garmin. Wow. That's all <laughs> that. do, for me, do you listen to music while you ride ever? No, usually not. Not somewhere you want to be safe, right? Like, yeah. listen to cars. So that was the only other thing. It's like, back to that USB port, maybe if you have a phone and you're, and yeah. you're doing something else, you can still access the power from that battery and you have the power pack 500 here. So right. this is great. I think that's about it then, Frankie. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you on the trail. Yeah. Thanks.